In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a topic that many of you have been asking for a very, very long time. I think I've seen a ton of messages in the past several months and even years, people asking me about this specific type of app. And that we're going to be talking about today is building a delivery app engine. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you used Uber, Uber Eats or any of the similar apps, the moment you order a product, whether it's a taxi to your destination or you are ordering food or anything of that sort, you immediately see what's happening on the map. You see, you know, the courier is picking up the product. If it's a delivery or if it's a taxi, you see where the taxi is and you see the taxi slowly approaching your destination. And so in today's video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how you can replicate that kind of behavior and embed it into the app that you're building, whether it's an Uber clone or Uber Eats clone or anything of that sort, any kind of app that requires uh, a user seeing the real time location of something happening. And that is what we're going to be doing today. Now, before we get started, as always, all the apps that I'm going to be showing you and or building in today's video are going to be available to view and or clone from my Patreon page. And you're going to see a link to it in the description below the video. Now, before we actually roll up our sleeves and start building the app, I want to show you kind of the overview, the general architecture of how this app is going to function and what you can expect when you're building the app. So here we have kind of a, a very simple architecture, a very, very simple diagram. We have the user here. Okay. This is my AI generated avatar here. And I'm actually going to be making an app on how you can build apps that generate avatars in the future. But in any case, so we have here a UI, right? And this is kind of an order status, right? So a user, you know, they ordered something and they need to know what's happening, right? Has the order been picked up? Uh, you know, is the taxi, did the taxi driver accept the request? Um, you know, how far is the taxi? How far is their, their food? You know, if they ordered like a burrito, how far is the burrito? You know, how, how many, you know, how many minutes is it going to take to get, to get to them? Things like that. Here we have the logic, right? And this is going to be the, the piece of the app that's going to display the map and calculate all these things, right? It's going to calculate, um, where the user is, where the, uh, the delivery person is, it's going to calculate the distance. It's going to calculate all of these things. So we, we see here display time left and as well as distance left. And we're also going to be displaying a couple of other things. Now over here is our database, right? This is kind of our, uh, source of truth. Okay. This is where like everything is happening, right? All the data, we are reading the data. We are writing to it. This is kind of like where all the data is stored. We're not going to be you know using local store or app store or anything like that we're just going to be using purely firebase db firestore db here and so you know we're going to have a collection called orders right because the user can have multiple orders uh that is the case with you know ordering food obviously with taxi they're going to have one order but it's the same concept and the fields on this document are going to be order name. It's going to be a start point, which is that start location and the destination point, which is going to be your house. Probably uh, time left until they get to you and distance left. Okay. Very, very useful information. And, uh, you can bet that, you know, users want to see this kind of information. And then on the other side, on the other hand, right across from, from me, right on the other side of the app, we have the, um, the delivery person or the driver, depending on what you're doing, depending on what you're ordering, whether it's a taxi or food. And so, um, this driver, right, our delivery person, they're going to be, you know, continuously sending their current location. So typically, you know, they're going to have, you know, they're, they're also going to have a device. It's going to be maybe an Android device or an iOS device. And on their side, they're going to be continuously sending their current location. So maybe every five seconds, they're going to be sending a location. Maybe every 10 seconds, they're going to be sending a location. It doesn't matter uh, the interval. What matters is uh, that they're sending the location and we are, you know, taking that data and we're displaying everything in real time. That's really the key here. And we're going to be building all of this in today's video. 
so here I am in Flutterflow. And before we get started, let's go ahead and configure our Firebase uh, Firestore DB. So I already went ahead and created a collection called Orders. You can ignore all these other collections. Uh, this is the one we're going to be using called orders. And here I have one document, which is one order. And I have the following field. So I have the destination. I have the distance left, which is going to be updated continuously by the, um, the app. We have the driver's positions. These are going to be the positions that the driver is going to be sending you know, from time to time continuously. And here we have the name of the order. So in this case, it's an awesome burger. It could be, you know, maybe a name of the restaurant or something that you order. And here we have the source. And this is the, the source where the delivery person is starting from. So, you know, if they are at a, at a restaurant, right, this is going to be the source. And we need source and destination because we need to calculate the distance left and time left. Okay. So, these are kind of the minimal fields. Obviously, you can include, you know, a bunch of other fields in case you need more information, but this is kind of what we have and it's enough to get started. Okay, so I configured this and I did that by going into project settings. I copied this project. I went back into Flutterflow. I went here and I went into Firebase and I pasted it here. And I said, you know, add this project. And I said, regenerate config files. It's all regenerated. And the next thing I did was I went to this Firestore schema setting and I created a collection, right? So I basically went in here and I typed orders. It has to be exactly the same as in Firestore, right? So this name should match exactly your collection name exactly as you have it in Firestore. So I type orders and then I typed uh, the fields of the document. So everything that I had in my, um, everything that I had here, right? So essentially all of the fields that I have here, I, I made the same fields here. Okay. So we have a lot long for source destination. Distance left is a string. Time left is a string name is a string and the reason i made it a string when it should be an integer is that it's just easier that way for testing because we're going to be getting back a string uh, from our api we're not going to be getting back an integer uh, driver positions which is an array uh, a list of lat long points so it's all kind of self-explanatory but you have to configure this okay so now that you've configured the firebase firestore db that is pretty much the easy part now the real work begins and you have to think how you can build an app that does that now the natural step is to see what flutterflow offers and in fact flutterflow offers some maps capabilities okay so if we you know we have this kind of blank page here and we come over here and you can actually add a map element okay so you can add a google map and you're gonna have a google map and you can kind of manipulate it you can uh you can have no markers you can have a single marker you can have multiple markers uh you can set an initial location you can kind of do all that but that is pretty much all that you can do it's very very limited this is nice for uh, you know, if you have a list of, let's say, a list of items, maybe a list of houses, you have like a list and you can display them all on the map, but you can't really do um, interesting kind of real time things, uh, especially something that we want to do uh, in this video. You can't really do it here. And so now you have to uh, come up with another solution. And so I thought about it and I went on my trusty site called PubDev. And if you're not familiar with PubDev, PubDev is the official package repository for Dart and Flutter app. And what that means is that these are like little pieces of code, little packages uh, that were coded by other people. They're open source packages and they're for Dart and Flutter. And as luck would have it, Flutterflow is actually Flutter under the hood. It's a, it's, it's a tool that generates flutter. So the thinking went that, um, if I can find a, um, kind of a, a Google map, some kind of a Google maps package, then I can manipulate and create distances and, and do drawings and lines and all that. Um, I would be set. So I Googled around, I searched on the site and I came up with this package called Google maps widget. And this is a Google maps widget for flutter. Okay. And so if you check out their screenshots, it's exactly what we're looking for, right? It's exactly, um, it's, it's exactly made for what we're trying to do here, right? Cause you can display a source, you can display a destination 
And you can also display, you know, a car or some kind of an object moving around. This is exactly what we need. Now, if you keep reading, you're going to see some important instructions. And the first thing that you need to do is you need to get your Google API keys, okay? Because you can't just access Google Maps uh, directly. You need to access it through an API, okay? And so here are some instructions. If you click here, you're going to be on the page that looks something like this, okay? Google Cloud, this is the Google Maps platform. And as you can see, I already have my API key. So I have one key for iOS you know, for um, for the users that are going to be running this uh, Flutterflow app on their uh, iPhones, iOS devices. I have a key for Android, for Android devices. And I have a browser key in case, um, you know, I, I'm actually going to have this app uh, running inside of a browser. Okay, so I have three keys. And depending on how the user is running the app, you know, in what device, right, uh, it's going to be using a different key. Okay, so you need to get three of these keys here. Now, if you scroll down, you're going to see sample usage towards uh, the bottom of the page. And here they have a, a piece of code that you need to use. And because Flutterflow does not support this out of the box, we have to use a third party piece of code. And fortunately, Flutterflow supports, you know, ways of including third party code using something called custom widgets, custom actions and custom functions. But in this case, we're going to be using a custom widget. OK, and so if you take a look at sample usage, this is essentially is this is a sample widget. OK, so if you scroll down, you can see that we need to create a stateless widget and we need to, you know, use this Google Maps widget, which is this package as a child. OK, so that's essentially what we need to do. We need to create a, a custom widget and then we need to use this uh, this piece of code here. And so this widget that we're going to be using it has a lot of parameters obviously because we need to set source we need to set destination we need to uh, also set the icons right so there's a bunch of icons such as the house icon the source icon the destination icon things like that there's so many things that we need to uh, set and also here we're going to be getting back things right so we're setting things and also we're going to be getting back things such as uh the total time and the total distance which is paramount right for the users because they're checking on their orders and they need to know okay when is the uh you know how far is the delivery person right are they like you know five miles away are they 20 miles away you know how much time i need to wait and all of that is going to be furnished to us using this uh custom widget uh because uh it uses google maps under the hood and google maps automatically calculates that it does directions and it automatically gives you a time estimate pretty much anywhere in the world. So it's very, very useful. And so the good news here is that you don't have to calculate the distance. You don't have to calculate the time. It's all going to be automatically calculated. You just have to set your parameters. And so let me show you how you can configure this. So we're going to go back inside of Flutterflow and we are going to create a custom widget. So we're going to come in here and you're going to come here. So I already have a widget here and you can simply do that by clicking add so you can you're going to click on add you're going to say widget and you're going to call this so maybe you want to call it you know widget one once you called it you're going to click here view boilerplate code and you're going to copy to editor okay this is important because this is pretty much the shell of your custom widget this is what you need to do once you've done that you're going to come in here you're going to go back here and you're going to take this custom widget here and you're gonna paste it inside of a container, okay? So I've already done that, right? So this is kind of what, what I have here. This is my custom widget. And all I did is I basically replaced this thing. I copied and pasted this text here that I got from this thing here, right? I copied and pasted. And as you can see, everything below is optional parameters. This is the only, this is the only required thing here. And as you can see, if you paste that, they require an API, Google's uh, Google Maps API key, and it's not going to work without the API key. So you need to get your API key first, and you're going to paste it in here. And so I have my API key here, and I have just some random locations here, right? So I'm just using what the widget tells me. So this location is actually in Spain, I believe, but we're going to double check that. So this is kind of what I put there. And I configured this and then I went back to my um, my kind of UI here. 
I went back to one of my pages and I inserted this widget. Okay, so this GMAP widget, and I gave it a width, and I gave it a um, height as well. Now, as soon as I included this custom widget, I got an error message. So it told me the target platform Mac OS is not yet supported by the Maps plugin. And that is because not all plugins support all platforms, right? So if you take a look at this plugin, it supports Android and iOS, okay? It does not support Mac OS and it does not support web, okay? So you can search around for a different plugin. You can take a look, but for the most part, you're gonna be building an app. It's gonna be on mobile, right? Uber, Uber, Uber Eats, all of these apps, they're mobile apps, right? If you're gonna be building a similar app, you want it to work on Android and iOS. You don't really care if it works on Mac OS or, um, you know, Linux or uh, the web, right? You only really care about mobile. And so even if you run this app, you're still gonna be getting this error message. And that is because when you preview apps on Flutterflow, um, it's gonna be showing either Mac OS or web, right? It's not gonna be, it's not gonna be building these apps for mobile. And so, even if I were to actually build this app and run this app, I would still get this error message. And that is because I'm using a Mac right now. And so Flutterflow would build my app for the Mac. Uh, in some cases, I believe it even built it for the web. And so the problem is it's not gonna build it for a mobile device. And so what we need to do in order to test this app is that we need to run this app in a simulator and it doesn't really matter because if you're going to be building an app that's going to run on mobile devices, you're going to have to do that anyway, right? You know, it's not enough to test the app uh, on Flutterflow. You still need to test the app on mobile devices. And so what we need to do is we're going to come click here. We're going to say download code. And it went ahead and generated all the code here and it downloaded and it's even telling me some instructions that I need to run. So after I unzip the package, I need to run the following command. And so this is my Flutter project. This is what I just downloaded from uh, Flutterflow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this command. So I'm going to copy these commands here. I'm going to go into my terminal and I'm going to run these commands. And so what it's doing it is, is it's downloading all the packages that we need in order to run this app properly. And that way we can run this app on a simulator. And then if everything checks out, we can even submit this app to app stores because we're going to be hundred percent sure that it works. So it finished doing everything, says so succeeded after, etc., And everything is, everything is fine. No errors. Everything is good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this directory here and I'm going to open up, open this app inside Visual Code Studio here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here, fold, file, new open folder, and I'm going to open this app right here, okay? So this is my app that I created inside Flutterflow. I'm going to go to main dark. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to pick an emulator. So I'm going to click here and I have a couple of emulators. I have an iOS emulator and I have a Pixel 6 Pro emulator so i'm going to select this device and this is the emulator here if you don't have this emulator go ahead and google for android studio and install it in your machine once you do that you're going to see uh the correct emulator inside of visual uh, studio code here but you can also run this app inside of android studio if that's what you want now before i actually run this app on an emulator uh, I need to do a couple of other things. If you go back to that widget, they have some instructions that we need to specify. And that is we need to include our API key in our config settings. So it says here, specify your API key in the application manifest, which is located here, Android app, source, main, etc. So if you go over here, you're going to see Android. Uh, what is it? Android app, source, main, app, source, main. And there's an Android manifest. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this thing here and it needs to be under application. So you have application, we're gonna paste this and we're gonna paste the Android key here. I'm gonna go to my credentials page. I'm gonna get my Android key. Okay, I just copied my Android key. I'm gonna paste it right here. And obviously your key is gonna be different. Once we've done that, we are now ready to run the app. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna go to main and we're gonna click on run right here. And this thing is gonna build our app and it's gonna run it inside of a Pixel emulator, Pixel 6 Pro. All right, and there's our app.
okay page title and there is our app okay now as you can see on the app it's not showing the images right it needs to show um the home and the destination that is because we forgot to copy the actual images that need to be here in this assets folder right so if you go into assets images we need to have some images here now in order to get the images you can simply click on example you can open this link right here and you can simply go to the main page here go to example here go to assets images and now you have the images here so you can simply download them here you can simply click on it it's going to be displayed you can simply file save this and then you can go to your app directory images and you can save it here next you're going to do that for the house marker icon you're going to go file save as and then you're going to do for the restaurant marker I save as and you're saving it into your assets images you're going to hit save if you go back to your app right here you can see that we have have all the images we have the delivery the uh, house and the restaurant okay so we can close all this next you want to make sure you have the right api key here okay so you're going to go ahead and copy your key pasted my key right here and now we can run the app run without debugging and it's going to launch it on this emulator here all right and there's the app and as you can see we have two points here and these are the points that we specified here the source lat long and destination lat long and it's also showing us directions and so it's showing us that we need to go this way go around and then go here and i believe this is somewhere in spain if we zoom out you're gonna see that this is madrid yeah it's just outside of madrid okay, so maybe somebody is familiar with this area but in this example this app is very very simple now let me show you a proof of concept that you get once you implement all of the functionality all of the features of this custom widget remember these are the required fields but there are also lots of and lots of optional fields that you can specify so let me show you the final proof of concept all right so this is the proof of concept app that essentially mimics a delivery person so here we have the real-time location here you have we have the restaurant and this is my house and as you can see this person is moving and that is because i am mimicking events there are some events in the database and as you can see as the person is moving you see that the time is being updated now they're three minutes away the distance is one kilometer right and that is because if we take a look at our database here we see that we are sending back the data from the widget but we are also reading things like destination and the source as well as the name but also the driver position so here i have several positions that i sent and these are essentially points that are somewhere in the middle. They're between uh, the restaurant and my house. And then I have a final point of zero, zero, which means that stop. Okay, stop. You know, that's it. The order has been completed or, you know, the driver met the person. Stop. Because, you know, your final point, it's never going to be exactly the destination, right? They may stop somewhere outside. They may stop around the corner. They may have trouble finding your house. And so I have three points, actually four points, kind of intermediate points. And then I have the final point. And so if you run this app again, you will see the delivery person is going to make kind of four intermediary uh, stops. And these represent their four kind of locations that they're sending. They're kind of going and they stop somewhere before the destination. OK, and as you can see, while they're doing it, time left is this distance left is that. And obviously, this is very, very easy to customize and to put into production because everything is taking from the database. So you can specify the destination, you can specify the source. Obviously, they're going to be completely different uh, depending on, you know, which country you're operating in or, you know, where the users are. Uh, this is going to be updated automatically. And then these points are going to be sent by the driver app. And so as an example, I can add another point that's going to be the destination point. And when we run the app, you're going to see the, the driver uh going all the way to the destination or at least somewhere near the destination if we copy this point here and i come here and i paste it as one of the final points and we get the latitude longitude here we paste it right here and then i add another point that's going to be the final point right we're going to say geo point zero zero which is the final point and now we should 
hopefully see the delivery person coming very, very close to the destination. So here they're moving. These are the intermediary points. They're five minutes away, 1.5 kilometers. And this actually updates every five seconds. So they're four minutes away, 1.2 kilometers, three minutes away. And there you have it. And now they're exactly at the destination. Okay. And that is because that last point before the zero, zero point was exactly the destination. And so as you can see, this is absolutely customizable because it's getting all the data from our trusty Firestore DB, things like destination, source, the name, time left, distance left, as well as the intermediate points that are going to be supplied by the driver app here. So the driver, you know, veers off course, we are going to see that as an intermediate point here, and you're going to see that on the map. So now that you've seen everything here, let's jump back into Flutterflow, and I can quickly show you how this proof of concept app works. So here we're back inside of Flutterflow, and first I want to show you the main page, okay? So we have a bunch of things here, name, source, destination, time left, distance left. These are the fields that I'm pulling from Firestore DB, right? So at the top, I am basically doing a query for a single document, okay? Obviously, this one page is going to have a single document. But if you're going to build a production app, you're going to have a list of orders. And then if they click on the order, you're going to pass that uh, order reference. And then you're going to pull up all the order information on the main page. And here we have this map widget. This is the second widget. And here I'm passing the document reference as well as the document. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm passing the reference because we need the reference to update the fields. But the document, I'm just passing it because it's very, very easy to read stuff from the document, whereas it's really, really easy to update things from a reference. Now, if we jump back into the generated code, this is our widget right here. And if we scroll down, as you can see, we have those parameters, those, uh, you know, required parameters, but we're also using lots of other parameters that are specified right here. So this is all from the package documentation. So things like, you know, the marker for the source, the marker for the destination, right? We have uh, the marker for the driver. So like for the source is a restaurant a marker, destination is house marker, uh, for the driver is driver marker. Uh, you can specify the size of the markers, right? I, I put it to 125 pixels. And if you scroll down here, you're going to see this driver coordinates stream. And what we're doing here is that every 5,000 milliseconds or every five seconds, we are going into our database and pulling up that next number that, you know, we are getting from the, um, from the driver, okay? And we keep doing that until the longitude to the zero and the latitude to the zero uh, last point, right? So if we go back here, you're going to see we have the zero, zero. Once we see that, that's it. They stop. So we're, we see like a list of um, list of points here. And then once we get to zero, zero, they're finished, right? That is the signal that we're done, right? And here we have this part that tells us how much time left. And that is because it's tracking where the driver is based on their last point. So if the driver veered off course, the time would increase and the distance would increase. And here we're essentially setting this time left and this, this and this distance left, right? Remember, we have the distance left and time left. And here we're setting those values back to the database. And so that's pretty much it. And really the crux of it all is you have the source, you have the destination, which are fixed right because the user is living at this location they're working at this location and the restaurant is at this location that's fixed but what's not fixed is the driver's current position right obviously if they're going along the route the predefined route then it's kind of predictable but if they veer of course or they take a shortcut or there's some traffic etc cetera, etc cetera, then you're going to see that on the map because the driver is going to be sending this data into the database. And so depending on the specific order, depending on how far the destination is from the source, you may see a lot more points than we're seeing it here. And that is why in the map, you're going to see lots of things happening. And plus, you're going to have distance left, time left automatically update because it's keeping track of where the driver is in relation to the destination. And so you can easily get this widget and implement it into your apps and have a real time delivery tracking engine. Now, if you enjoyed this app and you're thinking to yourself, hey, I really, really like this app. I wanna implement this functionality in my project. I have a great idea. Maybe I wanna build the next Uber 
the next Uber Eats. Maybe it's going to be something more niche. Maybe it's going to be for a specific market. And you want to get started on the right foot. You want to actually get this code and not worry about, you know, building it yourself and testing it and all that. Uh, you can easily do that by joining my Patreon community. Because when you join, not only will you get access to this app, but pretty much all the other apps that I built on the channel, all the Flutterflow apps, as well as some of the other apps uh, with other no-code builders. But you also get access to extra content, such as Q&As, live streams, behind the scenes content, and also my masterclass series, which are awesome deep dives on specific topics that the community votes on. But most importantly, when you join our Patreon community, you're going to be supporting the channel and supporting my work, which is highly appreciated. So if you're not yet a member, check out the link in the description and consider subscribing. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more content when it comes to creating custom widgets, check out the video you're going to be seeing in the corner of your screen. It's definitely going to help you 